My name is Sam, and I'm going to use this scale and these markers to show you guys how to understand house framing. Let's take a quick look at the elevations so we can figure out what we're looking at. Here's the front, and here's the rear, so let's get into it. The first thing, top down, we always want to look at are going to be the rafters. We need to figure out what the spans are from the walls to the ridges all over the roof so that we can figure out if we're going to use 2x6s, 2x8s, what's the spacing going to be, and what do we need to use. I'd like to use 2x6s 24 inches on center for the entire roof. In order to do that, we're going to have to add some purlin braces at different spans, and that's what these pink dashed lines are for. If any of the horizontal spans are over 11 feet, that's when I need to add extra support. So in this case, the left side of the building and the center of the building do have a larger span from the wall to the ridge over that 11 feet, and so I need to make sure I'm supporting at least every 11 feet. Now you might notice that I did not put these braces over that great room area in the front of the left of the building. That is because that is a vaulted ceiling. So the rafters are the ceiling and therefore there's no attic and we can't put purlin braces up there. So the rafters are just going to have to be sized to run from the wall all the way up to the ridge on their own. So the next thing we need to work on is we need to add beams. That is what these orange marks represent. Places where we need support underneath ridges, hips, or valleys, or purlin braces. Basically, we need structure in the ceiling or above the ceiling to put our structural loads on. And of course, I'm filling in with these blue rafters so that you guys can visualize what all the rafters are going to be doing as well. Now it's time to add the purlin support braces or the ridge, hip, and valley braces. Basically, every four feet along a ridge or purlin, we need to support and bring that load down to a wall or a beam below. So I am adding these little dots to represent, hey, we need to hold this up and support here. Later, we'll go back and draw a little line from the yellow dot that represents where the brace would go. It says, hey, this is what it would look like from the top-down view for the brace on the plan. It would stretch over here and land on this wall or this beam. And this little nugget right here is an overstack roof, so I'm just noting that. Now, funnily enough, I happen to forget to add all of my dots on the ridge right below where I'm marking out right now. So I just need you guys to pretend it's there. Now this guy looks kind of long. So let's check, how do we know if our brace is not going too far horizontally? Now remember the rule of these purlin braces. As long as I have a 45 degree angle to horizontal, I'm good. And so I'm gonna use the roof slope and I'm gonna use the knowledge of my plate heights and where I'm at in the house and I'm going to figure out what the missing dimension is. And here's the secret rule basically. Whatever the horizontal distance on the plan is, well, that's how far you can go or like that's how high you are. So if you find out how high you are in the roof, that's how far you can go horizontally in the plan. So that's how we know we're good is because this is a 10-12 roof and we have lots of height to work with. Okay, so now it's time to copy all of these beams over to our ceiling plan so that we can work on the ceiling plan. Now I want to pause here for a second because the selection of the size of the rafters over a vaulted ceiling is somewhat structural and it's also somewhat related to how you want to do the insulation. Or if you're going to do recessed cans and the recessed cans have a certain depth, you can only you know fit certain things inside the depths of certain rafters. So it's the builder's job to size those appropriately and pick out the size that makes sense for the whole project, not just the structural requirements. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of these ceiling beams in here. I'll go ahead and tray out the ceiling using beams and we'll just take care of all the porches and patios that I neglected earlier. And of course now just like we did the rafters, we are going to apply the span rule to all of the ceiling joists. I'm going to take my scale, I'm going to figure out, hey, which rooms have a span over 14 feet? If I'm using 2x6 ceiling joists, southern yellow pine number 2, I can go about 14 feet before having a span problem, assuming I don't have any load in my attic. So I'm just checking all the rooms. I'm going to pick layout based on the short span 
And that's pretty much it for the ceiling joists. It's pretty straightforward. And do not forget to box out your attic access. You're gonna to wanna to check the size door you need, the size rough opening, yada, yada, yada. But just note on the plan that, hey, there's actually an opening in the ceiling here. And last but not least, of course, you're gonna to wanna to check your headers, all right? Highlight your headers, make sure there's no surprises, make sure everything makes sense. What you really wanna look for in here is you want to see if any beams land on top of headers. Right here at the front door, we have a huge beam crossing the great room. It's holding a bunch of roof and it's gonna put a concentrated load straight in the middle of that door header. So we'd probably want to calculate that guy and make sure it's going to be sufficient or just make it huge. That's all we got on paper. Let's take a look at it in 3D. So here is a pretty close 3D approximation. Not perfect, but close. If you guys liked this and thought this was helpful, please share it with your builder friends and buddies so that we can get more people understanding how all this wood stuff works. Thank you. See you next week when I do another one.